Hello and welcome to another episode of Become. My guest today is Diana Swillinger. And I practiced that a little bit because it's not so easy for a German to say that. I would have totally pronounced it the German way, Swillinger, right? But in any case, um, I met Diana uh, a couple months ago. Um, I've been working with her and she has so much great advice as speaker and coach. And she gave me some great pointers. Uh, and I thought to myself, I have to get her on the podcast, not only because she can give some great advice, but also um, because she has a, a great story. And I think many of you can relate to it. So let me get her on stage. And there she is. Welcome, Diana. How are you? I'm wonderful. I am so happy to be here. I love that you call this a stage. I'm with you. I'm on stage with you. This is fun. Yeah, isn't it? Uh, we we both have so many things in common. I mean, you are a, a public speaker and coach. You are on stages a lot. I have been on stages a lot. And so, and even in my coaching, I still use all those metaphors uh, from the entertainment industry. So it's fun. We are on stage right now. And the microphone is yours because I would like for you to give our listeners just a quick um, rundown of who you are and what you do. Sure. Well, you know, you said I have a great story to share, except I don't know if this is the story you're expecting me to share, but I'm going <laughs> to share it anyway, because I believe that, you know, you know, this as a speaker, I believe that we connect over the common stories with shared experiences. And so I love to introduce myself that way. And, you know, I kind of, wish we'd all go around in the world. And when we met each other and we're like, hi, nice to meet you. Tell me about yourself. We all jumped into a story. I think that'd be so fun. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. So yeah. go ahead. <laughs> the stage is yours. Here we go. Well, right now I am a happy, confident, life-loving person, but I wasn't always this way. I grew up this way. People thought of me as the one who always making jokes, loved life, loved to do things, and was excited to go from day to day. But as life went on, you know, I got married, tried to marry the right person, had kids, tried to raise kids the right way. I went to church. I volunteered at school. I waved at the people walking down the street. And recycled. I just, you know, I was trying to live my life right. Because I believed that if you lived life well, if you did the right things, then everything would be great. I would be happy. I would have what I needed. And I could just enjoy life. That isn't what I found happening to me. It was a beautiful summer day my kids, my four kids were little. I had, my daughter was only two at the time and my boys were a little older. They were all running around the house playing and I didn't care what they were doing. I needed to go lay down. I wasn't not feeling well. I felt fine physically, but emotionally I was done. I went into my bedroom, I pulled the shades down, I laid down on the bed, plopped my head right in the middle, didn't even grab a pillow, and I just stared at the window blinds. I don't know how long I was there, and I had brought my cell phone in, it was on the bed next to me, and I felt it vibrate, but I still just laid there, not moving. And then it kept ringing. At some point, I was like, it's like I came to, and I was like, oh, I wonder if that's my mentor calling me. I remember calling her earlier today because I was struggling. So I picked up the phone and sure enough, it was my mentor, Ingrid, and she talked with me for a decent amount of time. I don't remember any of the conversation except at one point, it felt like we were totally silent for, you know how it feels like it's a really long time. It felt like it was a minute. It was probably only a few seconds. I had just told her whatever I was thinking and feeling 
and it was silent. She broke the silence by saying, Diana, I think you're discouraged. And I was like, discouraged? Huh. Yeah, I'm discouraged. <gasps> I'm discouraged. Not what you'd think we would feel like or how we'd express ourselves inside when we discovered we were discouraged. I was like, oh my gosh, I am discouraged. Something switched on in me in that moment. And I went on the rest of my day and I'm like, I know what I'm feeling. I can figure this out. If I'm feeling discouraged, it's because I've lost hope. Why have I lost hope? Let me look at my life and see. Oh, yes. My marriage is struggling. We don't have enough money to pay the bills. I um, don't have friends that I can reach out to. I feel like I'm all alone. I'm discouraged. Great. I can do something about this. And so I got to work. I started looking up um, psychology books, listening to podcasts, doing anything I could to figure out what does it mean to be able to name our emotions and what can we do with that? I got certified as a life coach. I was working with mo more mentors. I went to mastermind classes. I did everything I could to figure it out. And I became an advanced certified life coach, applied all the tools I was learning in my life. And I went from feeling discouraged to waking up every day with hope. And instead of feeling exhausted and like I was done, I felt like I was just getting started. Mm. I had control back in my life. And ever since then, Sabine, I have been helping every, I generally help women, but every woman that comes my way that can resonate with my experience and doesn't have the tools they need to be in charge of their emotions and what they want to create in their life. And I share with them what I've learned. So I became a life coach, which you know less about that business, but we met with um, the other business I do, which is helping people grow their businesses through speaking, because that's how I created a successful life coaching practice. So, so that's before, right before, how before I we go there, before we go there, because there's so much information, there's a lot. I definitely, yes, it's a lot. It's a lot. I, I just wanted to uh, pause here for a second so we can digest that, because what you just shared was so much all at once. And I believe that so many people can relate to that. And this is what this podcast is about, is right becoming our next best self. And especially when we, when we lose hope. And in your case, it's so beautiful that you said that, um, that you actually had to listen to your mentor or mm -hmm. your mentor pointed it out like a third person, a mentor, a coach that has that bird's eye view that can see where you are and can say, hey, this is, I think, what you see. And then you confirmed it. And then you were able to move forward only if we see and acknowledge and are aware of it, can we change, right? Exactly. Exactly. So, and, and I love that you started out that story because oftentimes I have first a conversation and then we go, I dig a little deeper to say, okay, what was that very challenging moment? But you described it so beautifully that everything was, I don't care for you right. and you were just laying down there and I, I could see that scene and this is one of the things that I always say to my clients you have to create the scene right being a director that's how I usually uh, work with someone and people are mesmerized by that I was mesmerized by that I'm sure many who are just listening right now are too you know that's I think we connect in stories it's like when we're watching a Hallmark movie or our favorite TV show or a movie at the theater, we can actually cry and feel emotions and we connect with these characters that aren't even real. My mom loves the show Heartland. She's watched it multiple times. And every time she gets to current, you know, after watching it the whole 17 seasons again or whatever it is, she's like, oh, I miss those characters. It's the stories where we connect. 
And I think that was an older tradition too, long ago, where you know we'd sit around the fire and tell stories. We're so busy today. We're not telling our own life stories to each other. And I think that's where we connect. It's where we grow. It's where we learn. And so, yeah, that's what I do. I, and I know you know all about that. Yeah. And another interesting fact that I found was uh, so many people are now wanting to grow their business and they are on social media and they just like me, 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 me. And look what I can do. And this is my link and buy from me and buy from me, buy from me. And even in those uh, um, you know, groups where you, you can share your website, but you know what happens is they just share, 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 but not looking at each other, not seeing who you are. And one thing I I did, some sort of by accident, but not really. So it was half intentionally. When I introduced myself, I didn't say, hey, I'm this. I help women to become better speakers or whatever I say. I said, hi, I'm Sabina. And I Put, post pictures that are personal and just introduce myself. What I did, I was a stage and TV actress in Germany and now I'm this and I have my two dogs. And so it was very personal. Do you know how many people replied to that? I had people DM me from that. I didn't even say, this is my business. I mean, of course, indirect, I said, I'm, I'm a coach, but that was like one sentence. I think I told the story first, and that makes a difference in the world. Yeah, you know what you were doing is you were showing up to connect with people instead of showing up to try to get people to do something you wanted them to do, which could be to follow you or buy something from you. And in that way, we're depersonalizing people. If we're just looking for them to do what we want them to do next, instead of seeing people as people and wanting to connect with them. And I've approached my entire business that way. I think that's part of why I am successful as a life coach is I never look at people as you could be my client. I don't even think of that. I just think I have a person in front of me and they have a fascinating life and they have a story. I wonder what I can learn from them. And I wonder how we can relate and connect and lift each other up. And in doing that, I always have plenty of people come to me want, wanting to work with me because we've connected and they know I care. Yes, and I think yes. that's what you're talking about when you show up and say, hi, I'm Sabina. Here's what you can learn about me. And I, I'm here because of this. And you're then drawing connections. And they're like, oh, Absolutely. I have dogs too. And oh, you know, I can relate to her on that. And now they're feeling connected. Yes. And I tell you, I got... Uh, uh, several people who wanted to know what I do and I invited them to my book launch party and they bought the book and I got a new client. Actually, uh, a, a mom said, hey, my son needs some some help with confidence. And it's it's magical when you approach your business from a human level and tell your story or Tell somebody else's story for that matter. Right? Learn how to tell your story and incorporate it into your business and see it transform. I invite you to get a copy of my book, Become Empowered, Echoes of Grace and Strength, Real Life Stories of Women's Transformation and Triumph. This is a wonderful way, not only to be entertained and inspired, but also to learn how to tell powerful stories. So click the link in the show notes and get your copy now. How did you make the transition to actually start your speaking, quote unquote, speaking career? Well, I, I mean, I've had speaking under my belt for years. I used to work in nonprofit. I was a fundraiser. So I'd go out and speak to entire school districts with 800 people there or at events filled with CEOs and donors and all that. And not necessarily like, well, some of them, I was like the main speaker for raising funds, but other times I might be the MC or that sort of thing. So I had that comfort zone from that experience already. And from my church, I used to do music at church. So I've been on stages since I've been a teenager. But I didn't fall into speaking to grow my business the way you just described. 
actually around <laughs> the same time I was deciding to become a life coach, I had someone I just met who became a mentor of mine. Um, and it's a friend of mine. I, I knew his wife. I had a friend named Pam Quinn. And then she said, hey, you need to meet Pat Quinn. Well, Pat Quinn is a world renowned speaking coach and I had no clue. So I had lunch with him and toyed around with starting my own business. And he said, have you ever thought of becoming a life coach? And I was like, no. <laughs> well, he also told me if I decided to do something like that, how it could work where I could speak and just go speak for free and then create a pipeline of all the clients I would need because my ideal client would be Christian women like me. And lo and behold, Christian women gather all the time at churches and events and retreats and seminars and conferences, and they need speakers for those. So it took me a couple of weeks to take the plunge and decide, oh my gosh, I'm going to become a life coach because other people were telling me to become a life coach. And like I said, in that opening story that I shared with you, I was already searching for all these solutions and had come across other coaches and had kind of gone into the space. So it all came together and Pat Quinn was in my ear with, you can speak to get all the customers you need. So I took a little bit of mentoring from him and I went out and started my business and I went out and spoke for mothers of preschoolers who gathered at churches. <laughs> <laughs> did you just go or did you uh, I just, just said, I went online I found out who to contact I told them I could speak at their event and I think it was on how to stop the negative thought loop in your brain and I put together a talk that was not great but who cares I went out right. there and started speaking and I offered everyone something for free a free guide that could get emailed to them so that they could take what I taught them on how to stop the negative thought loop and they could print it out and practice it every day, any day that they wanted to, they'd have the tool that they needed. And so they would ask for it. I'd email it to them. They'd be on my email list. And then I'd invite them for a free coaching call. I just did that for, for years. Then I started doing free online classes or webinars to offer more things and a podcast, the renew your mind podcast to offer more things for free, I create my own stage where people could come find me. And I thought, I'm just gonna put as much value out into the world as possible and people will continue to come my way. So I learned this process from a mentor and then he invited me to become a speech, speaking coach because I did become a better speaker over the years <laughs> and train other entrepreneurs how to do it. So now I have been, over the last five years, I have coached entrepreneurs from around the world on how to speak in order to grow their business. And it's not a manipulative speak and convince people to become your customers. It's a go speak to people who would be your ideal clients and teach them valuable things and then invite them to take a next step with you. And it works, it works. Mm -hmm. So I've helped entrepreneurs who are just starting a business from ground up do this. And I have helped people who have $2 million a month businesses do this. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. You can do this at any point in your business to get out there and share value and invite people to take a next step with you. And then you don't have to feel salesy at all. It is also there. There is a, a technique to it that you do it a certain way. So it doesn't sound salesy and it makes you feel good. And just a little tweak. And that's what I love so much about um, getting a coach, a mentor, even if it's not a lot or you are already advanced. I mean, if somebody's starting out, by all means, you know, that's absolutely a must. But I just wanted to point out, I was pretty advanced. However, one little tweak can make the difference in the world if you want to grow your business or not. Wouldn't you agree? I totally agree with that. I can't tell you. I invest in myself to be a better coach, a better speaker, a better business person, better at sales. There's all the different avenues I can invest in. And sometimes sometimes it costs me $10,000. Sometimes it costs me $2,000. One time I paid $2,000 for a year-long program 
that I hardly participated in, but I knew the value was going to be there for me. And it came when I showed up on one coaching call and I raised my hand to get coached. And I asked my coach, she'd have been, a, I, you know, I joined her program because I've been in other programs of hers and she always inspires me and I love her business. And I was thinking about starting a life coach certification program. And I got on and I'm like, but my life coach business is working so well. It runs really well. And it's like I told, I didn't tell her, but Sabina, mm -hmm. I would just go out and speak and mm -hmm. invite people to get something free from me. And then I would nurture them. And then I'd get all the clients I needed. It worked so well. So why would I want to do this? And I mm -hmm. said, you know, I'm only working 30, 40 hours a week. I don't have to work that much. And I, you know, I, I can take vacation whenever I want. It's a really nice business. So why would I want to go do this? And she said, you know, Diana, you're right. You don't have to do it. You can just keep doing what you're doing and stay comfortable. It's totally fine. And I had this gut reaction and I was like, no, no, I can't do that. I can't, <laughs> but I have a great, I have this great idea to share everything I put in place to be a great life coach. My clients get great results and I can teach other people how to do this and that will help more people. And she said, well, sounds like you do want to do it. I said, I do want to do it. You're right. <laughs> she coached me for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. That is the most I participated in the program. I listened to a few other coaching calls. I didn't really get into the content. And you know what? That 15 minutes was worth those $2,000. Yes. And that is one of the things people oftentimes overlook. You know, they want to get everything, but not investing in themselves. Right. And what you just shared, it's it's interesting because uh, when you feel, quote unquote, comfortable with where you are, some sort of, right, either you have enough income, everything is fine, or sometimes even, and I had that conver conversation just recently, it, you it's not working out anymore like it used to be but this is what you know and you're comfortable doing that so sometimes you just keep doing the same thing over and over and over again expecting different results right right and the most important part is that we invest in ourselves to be open and to be open for that change but oftentimes fear comes in uh can you think back on a time where really fear came in that was almost paralyzing, but you got through that? In my life, uh, I felt a great amount of fear when I left a destructive marriage because I was going from what was known for decades to something completely unknown. And so I had fear because I was moving into the unknown. Mm -hmm. I didn't know, I was uncertain of what was to come. And so I had courage and I did it anyway. When I started my business, I had fear because I felt insecure. What if nobody wants to work with me? Mm -hmm. What if I can't make enough money? I'm feeling insecure or maybe incapable or a little bit of both. Well, what if I have the fear and because in, in that insecurity, but I have courage and I move forward and do the next thing anyway. And there's been a lot of other scenarios, but I like honing in on what is it that's making me feel fear? And is there an underlying emotion attached to it? Because now I can do something with that. Mm -hmm. It makes perfect sense. Now, there is obviously the level of understanding that, this is how it works and that courage combats fear. And we, we understand it on, in our mind, but do you have a certain procedure or activity that actually brings from your understanding, this is what it is. This is, I have to just bring the courage in, but actually doing and implementing something that helps you in that situation. Absolutely. I mean, well, one of the things I do, if I am not figuring it out on my own, because my plans aren't 
or plans I've used before to work through fear aren't matching the current situation and I can't figure it out. I get coached. <laughs> I have, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four coaches right now. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> you know, and, um, yep. you know, one's a coach in trade. One's a one-on-one -on -one coach that I've hired. And the other two are coaches where I'm in their programs, but I can get coached if I need to. Mm -hmm. So they're diverse. And, uh, and so I can do that. But in general, when I have fear, I love the movie. What about Bob with Bill Murray? Uh huh. You know, it's just a spoof, but Dr. Leo Marvin created the book called baby steps. And you know what? I took what I learned in the, what about Bob movie? And I apply it to my life. <laughs> I, my procedure is always baby steps. So yeah. Bill Murray's character, Bob, was has all sorts of irrational fears. And he left Richard Dreyfus's office, Dr. Leo Marvin, and he was afraid to go on the elevator. On the way up, he took the stairs, like to the 10th floor. And so his homework, immediate homework, was to take the elevator. So he's like, baby steps to the door, baby steps out of the lobby, baby steps down the hall, baby step, push the button baby step, get on the elevator, you know, and I do that with things I'm afraid of. I'm like, I don't have to imagine all of it all at once. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is take, what is the next step? Great. I can do that one step. That one step isolated doesn't feel so scary. Right, right. Now done. What is the one next step? Don't look beyond it. Just pick the one next step. I'm going to end with one of the questions that I often ask. If you have had a magic wand and you could wish anything that you want, what would your wish be? I would wish that every human being in the world for today till the end of time would have a healthy capability to feel empathy. That's what I would wish. I think the world, I think all of our problems would be solved oh. if everyone could really understand what it's like for other people and care. Yes, that is beautiful. I think that was one of the most beautiful answers that I have received this mm -hmm. far because it's very needed in the world that we live in. Because if we don't have empathy and if we fighting hate with hate, we're not right. going to go anywhere. That's a anywhere. lack of empathy right there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So, and that is the, sometimes the hardest part because we have friends and family members that we have to begin to show that empathy, even if they don't see, if you don't see eye to eye, but also understand that everybody has their path. Everybody has their learnings to do while they're here. And, and we sometimes have to just let it be like Amen. the Beatles said. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much, Diana. And I wish you all the best. And I can't wait until we see each other again. I'm sure we will sometime down the road because there's so many things we have in common. And I would love to have that conversation in the future again. It's always a joy to connect with you. Thank you for having me on your show, on your stage. <laughs> Yay! <laughs>